I didn't want to get this thing, but they made me do it. I've already got a perfectly good MacBook Air, and this is the M1 version. I've been using it for a few years. It replaced my 2020 MacBook Air, which was the last Intel version. Looks just like this one. I did a video about the differences between the two. You can probably check that up, I don't know, somewhere up here somewhere. But I didn't realize when I say the word 2020, because this is also a 2020 MacBook Air M1, that it's been five years. And I haven't noticed. I use it all the time. There's nothing that it can't do. And I had no plan on upgrading this MacBook Air until I saw what this thing was priced at, this M4 MacBook Air. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be checking out this MacBook Air. This is the M4 version, and like I said, I wasn't in the market for a new laptop, and I wasn't even looking at it, but I saw what the price was, and I thought, is that right? And the base price is a good deal, the education price is a good deal, but this was priced even lower than that, and it was all over the place, Amazon, Best Buy, all had dropped down another $50, and the thing's only a month or so old. So in the world we live in, with everything jumping up in prices or the scare of electronics jumping up in prices because of tariffs, this MacBook Air found its way down to a price that I just couldn't say no to. Now, I've done zero research on this thing, other than the fact that I've got one of these. This is the M4 Mac Mini, and it is an amazing powerhouse packed into this tiny little thing. I've done plenty of videos on it, still making more, so hit that subscribe button. But to see that they can pack all this stuff into a tiny little laptop with a nice screen and a great keyboard, and enough upgrades to make me think, maybe it is time to replace my M1. And the good thing about the M1 that I've had for years, just like the M1 Mac Mini that I had before this one, was I really didn't have to worry about the M2 or the M3. Sure, they were getting faster and faster, but the M1 was still a great chip. But this jump to M4 just makes perfect sense as the jumping point for going from the M1 to an upgraded version of whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's your MacBook Pro, your Mac Mini, your MacBook Air, your iMac, whatever it is. If you've got an M1, then the M4 is definitely something to look at. Now, it's not just the speed of the chip that gets increased. The big thing and the selling point really for the Mac Mini for me, and then again for this MacBook Air, is jumping up to that 16 gigs of RAM as the standard. Now, sure, we still got tiny little SSDs in here, and that's fine because I've got plenty of videos to show you how to use an external SSD that's just as fast, or if not faster, than the internals. And that's because they're putting these great ports on here, the USB-Cs and the Thunderbolts, and we're going to see what this is. Like I said, I've done no research. I don't know what these are. Hey, that looks like MagSafe. Didn't know that. My M1's got the USB-C charging, and I love that. But I guess we're going to have to open this thing up and check it out. So that's what we're going to do. Now, do you guys really like watching people peel stuff? I see plenty of videos doing it. I don't get it. So here we go. Man, this box, I just can't get over how well made this stuff is that Apple puts together. When you get that excited about a stupid cardboard box. But let's see what we got here. Obviously, this is the MacBook Air, and I've got the Midnight Edition. I could have waited around and special ordered a blue one or, I don't know, pink or desert sand or whatever the other ones were. But this one was in stock, and I think it looks nice. Now, just first feeling this thing, it feels different in the hand than the other MacBook Air I had. I figured it'd be the same thing, just a different chip inside, but this is a different body completely. Let's see what else we got in here. Oh, that's nice. The charging cable matches the color. So that would be, I don't know, midnight charging cable. And sure enough, yep, it's USB-C on one side. And this would be, I'm guessing, the MagSafe 3. Got some other stuff in here. Got a little charger. Let's see how many watts this guy is. Yep, 30 watts USB-C power adapter. That's crazy. This thing just sips energy. I think, what was it, the 11-inch MacBook Air that they had several years ago that had a tiny little adapter. And this is an absolute powerhouse using just a measly little 30 watts. Impressive. 
let's get this box out of the way and check out this computer here. And of course, this is actually upside down, so it's going to open the other way. That's the way Apple likes to do it. But what I first felt here is these feet, and that's what really like caught my eye. That's reminiscent of the old, you know, rubber feet that would be on MacBooks or MacBook Pros, whatever they were over the years. And instead of being rounded off domes, they're more like, I don't know, they look like kitchen magnets. They're more flat and uh, a little bigger footprint. So let's see how they feel once you get it on a surface here. And not quite as much grip as those more rubbery domed ones have, but I think it'll be all right. Let's open the lid, see what we got. Oh, hello, it's alive. But I'm gonna let this thing boot up. And while it does, oh, that was quick, <laughs> jeez. I was gonna look at some other things, but the darn thing's already booted up. But we've got the fingerprint sensor over here, and instead of being an integrated into the key, you can actually see it this time. That's kind of neat, this keyboard Looks nice, I can't wait to uh, start typing some stuff out on it. Tiniest little bezels. And we've got our little, uh, I don't know if you can see it, let me pan up. Yep, we've got our little, what do they call that, the chin on the iPhone? But very nice, very striking with its all midnight colors down here below the bezel and the whole keyboard area. And a ginormous trackpad, best trackpads in the business. But yeah, it looks absolutely great. Let me take a second to go ahead and log into this thing and get it set up and we'll check it out. All right, so I got it all set up. It did have one update to Sequoia and I went ahead and downloaded that. It took about a half an hour and got that all updated. Stepped through all the questions about setting up the account, giving it a password, all that good stuff. And I'm here at the main screen. Now remember this thing came with this 30 watt power brick, which is USB-C, but I thought I'll just go ahead and take this and plug it right into my Anchor desktop charger here and interesting enough, it says it's drawing 57.8 watts. And that's quite a bit more than what this would obviously supply, I would imagine, a 30 watt charger. So I want to go into the system report and see what the system report says about the charging situation right now. So here is system report, and I'm going to go down to the power tab and scroll down to the bottom to where it sees the AC charger. And it says, yes, it's connected. It shows it as a 60 watt charger and it says that it's charging. So we see the indicator up here that shows that it is charging and it's currently at 47%. So it looks like it can charge faster than the 30 watts, which is kind of interesting and good to know at the same time. I wonder why they would supply a smaller charger than what it's capable of. Obviously one option could be because it saves them money. The other option is maybe it doesn't need any more than 30 watts to charge and run at full speed at the same time. And I know that M4 chip is pretty efficient, but good to know that we got some room for extra charge. Now again, this is the base model. So this has the 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigabytes of SSD. We'll have some videos coming up soon to show you different ways that I use external drives for increasing the SSD capacity and you know managing files because it really doesn't make sense to spend the extra money to get this up to the 512. I don't know, it was a couple hundred extra bucks. Same thing with the 15 inch screen. I think it was like a $200 jump for the 15 inch screen and I'm sure it looks great, but in all reality, I want this thing lightweight so I can throw it in the backpack, carry it around and not know it's there. 15 inches is a, a beautiful machine, but it is a tiny bit bigger than what you might want to throw in a backpack every single day. Now, as I was setting it up, I was using the keyboard, obviously, to type in passwords and, you know, usernames and accounts and stuff like that. And I am very, and I'm very happy with what the keyboard feels like. I know we went through some bad years with some of those butterfly keys or the butterfly two keys or whatever they were that would get dust in them and mess up. I've got Another laptop that's 15-inch, uh, I think 2017 or something, was very expensive at the time, and I think the B key doesn't work unless you hit it a couple times. And those keyboards, they never really felt good in the first place. This one right here, it just feels good. And the fingerprint reader for the Touch ID, it worked great. It had me set it up in the setup screens for macOS, of course, and it has been working great. 
just great technology. I love Touch ID. I think even more so than the Face ID, but it just makes perfect sense on a laptop like this, especially if you have Apple Pay. Just makes it super easy to make some purchases. Use your finger to authenticate. Makes you feel like you're in Star Trek or something. So let's just go real quick to the Apple website and look at some of the specifications for this brand new machine here and see what it's got inside. All right, so I've zoomed in a little bit on the screen so we can look at some of this information here on the MacBook Air. And again, like I said, I did no research beforehand, really. I understand what a MacBook Air is, but wasn't really tracking what the newest and greatest was. So we got MacBook Air built for Apple Intelligence. MacBook Air, still the world's most popular laptop, this time with the M4 chip and built-in Apple Intelligence. So let's keep on scrolling here. Less than a half of an inch thin. Now look at these things here. That's one of the things that's kind of hard to describe unless you feel it in person is that the edges here are more squared off than on the previous models. So whereas the previous model had kind of like a domed top to it and kind of rounded off corners, this one has a very, I wouldn't say sharp edges, but at least more defined edges. But it's just incredibly thin. Just, I don't know how they do it. And here's the different colors that we got. Sky blue, silver, starlight, and midnight. And I think, I think I'm glad I got the midnight. If it was more the darker blue, kind of like my Apple Watch is, I would have gone with that. But I think the, the midnight works the best for me. Incredibly light M4 chip. 23 times faster than the fastest Intel-based MacBook Air. So I'm going to guess that was the 2020 MacBook Air. So 23 times faster and then 2 times faster than the M1 MacBook Air. So pretty darn fast, good battery. It's got Apple intelligence. I know they've added this to the last couple you know, hardware revisions. And a couple of my devices have been asking me if I want to activate it yet. And I haven't played around with it, but I'll be sure to play around with it on this laptop here. Privacy, let your apps fly. I think we're going to have to do some bench tests on this thing. So keep tuned to the channel. And if you want to see some benchmarks, let me know down in the comments. Look at this display here. Liquid Retina display supports 1 billion colors and has up to two times the resolution of comparable PC laptops. I don't think it's any shocker that Apple has the best displays on the market. And oh, it's got the center stage camera. I don't do a lot of web meetings, but that's kind of neat that it's got center stage. And what is desk view? Share a top-down view of your workspace while staying on screen. Great if you're tutoring online or showing off your latest project. I'm not exactly sure how that works. What? How is that working? I'm not sure. I don't think there's any cameras on the back side of this. Maybe they're using a phone or something and holding the phone over the work. I'll have to look into that. And then here's the connections. Just got a headphone jack on one side. Got the MagSafe 3 for charging. And then two Thunderbolt 4 ports. Incredibly fast. Plenty of docking stations out there to increase all those ports to whatever it is that you need. Gigabit Ethernet, USB-C, USB-A, all kinds of things. So I think we'll have to get either a USB-C dock or a Thunderbolt dock to test this thing out. So stay tuned for that too. MagSafe charging, Thunderbolt 4, Touch ID. Like I said, it worked great in this one. It's never been a better time to upgrade. So here you can select your current MacBook Air, and it will tell you how fast it was. It's the only two they give you an option of are the two that they've already told you how much faster they are. But that's kind of neat. Add six hours of battery life, battery life over the Intel-based one. And doesn't say anything about the battery life on this one. But this is something here. Supports up to two external displays. So that is a, a good selling feature for some people that use multiple displays. There were some tricks to get the M1 to have more than one display. But this just works natively right out of the box. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, a lot of good stuff. Here's a comparison of the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Airs. Obviously, the MacBook Pros give you the options of the higher speed chips, the M4 Pro and the M4 Max. And that also comes with the much higher price. But pretty impressive features, pretty impressive specs. I imagine this particular laptop will be very popular for college students. With summer on the way, 
parents are going to be shopping around for that perfect laptop to send their kid off to college with. And I think this one is going to be a good deal for a lot of parents. All right, so I think that's going to wrap it up for this video. Like I said, this is just kind of like a first impressions type video. Not a video I was expecting to make because I wasn't expecting to have a new laptop so soon. But after seeing everything that it packs, I am definitely not disappointed at all. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, I appreciate the thumbs up. If you've got any questions, go ahead and drop those down in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer anything I can. Go ahead and check out the rest of the channel. See what else I got on there. Check out some of the videos on the M4 Mac Mini so you can see what performance is going to be like. And then, of course, stay tuned on this channel for more videos to come featuring this M4 MacBook Air. We're going to have to play some games on it. We're going to have to do some benchmarks. And I'm going to have to get those videos done quick so I can go ahead and get this thing in my backpack and get that M1 out of there. And we'll find a new home for that. But that's going to do it for this one. I thank you as always for watching. And until next time, peace out and geek out.